Hi, my name is Gabriela Sanmeron and I am the Head of Grooming and Creature Effects at Framestore IA in London. I'm here today to talk a little bit more about the CG creatures we've been creating over the last few years. And on each one of these creatures, I'm going to be showing a piece of technology that we developed especially for that project and then kept carry on along the other projects as well. I'm going to start showing off a showreel with a little bit of each one of these creatures that I'm going to be talking about. Hope you have enjoyed the show reel. Before I start talking about the creatures, I'm going to give a little bit of background on who am I and uh, what I did before I started the 3D career. So I was born in Brazil on a very small city on a farm. I was surrounded by animals everywhere and I love animals of all types. And this special for animals uh, is carried across until today and uh, it can be transposed to the work I've done. So I, I love to observe what they do, how they look like, uh, every little detail on them. So that has been part of me since I was a small child. But when I grew up, I studied uh, computer science at University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. It's where I learned how to program, how to do proper mathematics and all this boring stuff. But uh, this kind of knowledge is what gave me the ability to be able to create new tools and to develop new stuff. So in the end, it was pretty useful. Many years after that, I got a chance to come to London and start working at Framestar. Uh, Framestar uh, in London has a department called IA, which stands for Integrated Advertisement. We do from advertisements to episodic to immersive content. So the projects I'm going to be showing belong to all of those three kind of like types of projects. And it's pretty exciting because they vary a lot from one to the other, but in all of them, you can keep like the quality and have the ability to develop. The first one I'm going to be talking about is first project I worked when I joined Framestore, which is the lion from the Mercedes-Benz advertisement, which is called uh, King of the Jungle. This was my first like proper time using Houdini Groom and uh, also using Houdini for hair simulation. And it was very challenging back at the time and uh, I learned a lot during the process. In the end, we were able to produce a very nice asset and also like discover this whole Houdini new world. The most uh, tricky thing about this project, in, in my point of view, was doing the hair simulation, especially on this shot when it had to collide with the hands and have like to give the effect that the hands were passing through the hairs. This project uh, was very important because it opened up our minds that uh, that was the right way of doing it. Uh, we would stick with Houdini, we would push every time more and more and be able to start developing on top of that. I realized that how easy it was to create new stuff on it. In the end, this project was nominated for the VES and I received a direct nomination for Outstanding Animated Character in a Commercial. The next project that I worked on was called Perquest and was an immersive attraction for the Wanda Kingdom Park. 
in at this project, the most important part that I developed was the CFX setup as a, a real like unit that could be massified across multiple shots quite easily and could be adapted from one character to another character in quite like a fast way. So it was a setup that could be reusable and was stable and also allow like having flexibility to be able to handle a lot of shots and multiple different characters that vary from dragons with long hairs to princes with multiple layers of clothing, long beards and the main character with the sash attached around it. So it was a very challenging project. But it was, was very important to solidify this workflow. Uh, another aspect that I got first incorporated was the time and space remappers, which means we could easily deal with slow motion sections without having to worry too much if it's going to work or not. So we could simply type in uh, where the slow motion section was and it took care of everything. And also related to space, if they're moving like thousands of miles per hour, it, it didn't matter because it, it was going like to simulate in a more adequate spacing and then add back all this action to it. After that, I worked on the reindeer advertisement for McDonald's. And that was a completely different challenge from the project uh, before that, because we had to create this full CG reindeer with a lot of close-ups and it had to look really nice. One of the tools that uh, I developed during that time is called probabilistic maps. I also call them color maps. And it's the ability to mix different uh, fur colors on the, the same texture. So instead of like the normal workflow when you open like a, a image texture and paint all the colors on that, instead you're painting attributes and those attributes are actually like a probability of a hair to be black, white, or brown, or whatever color. And they combine like multiple of those attributes, make a normalization, and then you got the result. As you can see here, uh, how each one of these attributes uh, are getting combined, and then the fur, like a per hair color on the fur is getting mixed along then until we get the final look. Uh, even on this complicated pattern, we could easily achieve that without spending a, a good amount of time in texture. And you also don't have like the blurry effects that you get in the texture. So this gives a more natural mixing of colors. Another tool that was developed during that time was the hair clipper, which uh, was initially were made to deal with the harness interacting with the fur. So it detects that there is a collision and it clips the hair, but leaving the bottom part still there. So it, it doesn't delete the full hair, it only likes to delete the area that is, is inside. So it, it kind of helps give at the last bit, like even if you're seeming the hairs, it, and some of them are crossing, this, some of them are not going to be showing up. And we use the hair clip on pretty much every project now and, and the, on all kinds of situation. It's a super stable tool and very powerful. In the end, we received another nomination for the VES for Outstanding Animated Character in a commercial and also a BAFTA nomination for it. On this next project, we had the chance to create a burr for the Money Supermarket advertisement and uh, one of the main aspects for it was the ability to deform the hair which means you're not generating hairs on every single hair we are generating on the rest pose and attaching it to the animated guides it was kind of a big deal in terms of performance and saving disk space and all that i also uh, developed the divide and conquer uh, aspect of it, which means we are not rendering hairs all at the same time. We are splitting it in multiple pieces and processing individually and then combining back at render time. 
and this saves a, a huge amount of memory and allows us to hit the same number of segments and hairs. Uh, after that, we could easily deal with like 100 to 200 million segments on a single creature. We also developed the wetness look on it and a system to quickly attach geometry like water droplets, water streams, leaves and dirt and uh, you also get deformed alongside the hair deformer and works really stable and easy. On this next project we had a lot of digital doubles with long capes and uh, a full cloth and stuff. I developed one thing that's called a collision cleaner. So it gives the solver an extra collision pass that handles any failed collision without having to resume everything. So it, it is based on a multi-solver and it adds this extra pass that cleans up anything that's not working. As you can see on this test, on the first one, uh, it's what happened without the system. So some parts of it get stuck and never leave it. But on, on the side, you can see with this collision cleaner applied how everything uh, works nicely and even if the collision fails after a couple of frames it's working again and uh, it also works for self collisions as you can see here even like deep collisions it kind of it cleans up if you increase the iterations and it works for multiple layers so it, it detects what layer what layer is in front and start clean up i also developed one tool to control applied forces on a simulation in this case, you can see the result without it and with it. This next project is called Alien Words and is a documentary for Netflix. The main challenge was the two furry characters on this show. And they had uh, quite a scraggly fur and a lot of segments and multiple characters on the same shot. So I had to push even more the Grom optimizations to make sure their rendering without using a huge amount of memory and having a nice performance. It was quite a fun project and it was recently nominated for the Emmy Awards. For the season 4 of The Crown for Netflix, we created this CG stag. And the main aspects that was developed during this project was a new way to do the wind simulation, we relied on uh, wind fields. It's a, a cheap way to calculate how the wind bends around the character. So we make sure that behind the character there are no wind influence and it's calculated on a sub level. So it's super quick and uh, very stable. We can get results even before running the simulation, like a preview on how it's going to look like. We also did another step of improving the hair deformer, this time to be able to hold tight clumps, those wet clumps, and it will involve a full rewriting of that. And uh, we also improved the attached geometry scattered around it and the way it reacts with the deformed hair as well. It was a super fun project that in the end it receive VES and uh, BAFTA nominations. In this advertisement for the Wonka's Fantastic Factory, we created a CG goose and uh, we used our custom feather tool that our R&D department developed and it's super powerful. It includes a feather blending setup that can blend from the tiniest feather in his face uh, to the sharper ones on the neck and to the round ones more in the bottom of it and it nicely like blends the shape blends the curvature the scraggliness everything to create a super natural transition another aspect that was improved during that project was the feather splatting um, here on the wings you can see before and after how based on the uh, what you call like a sock mesh which is a proxy mesh it uh, projects layer by layer until it forms like this round shape without intersections it was also used on the body to create this uh, stacking effect of like one feather this tightly placed on top of the other 
on this next project for the His Dark Materials Season 2. We created this limber and uh, I made a, a setup for parting lines on it. So whenever he's moving around, you would see those parting lines, like this parting on the fur, opening and closing, reacting to the type of like movement it does. And uh, it's pretty much all based on SOPs, although it can be integrated into a dynamic level. And uh, use a special calculation to detect where it's stretching or not that are R&D developed. And uh, it, it worked really nice and it's quite a cheap solution as well, which means we can easily use on multiple projects from now on. His Dark Materials uh, also received a BAFTA nomination recently. And that was an overview of some of the creatures and some of the technologies and tools that got developed and improved along those years. It was super quick, but just to give a, a little insight of how things happened, I would like to thank our R&D, Philip, who helped me create all of those amazing things over these years. And I also mentioned that we got a super amazing team of groomers and character effects that help it bring to life all these creatures. To close them, uh, if you're interested in grooming, I got a tutorial series that approaches how I do this step-by-step -step, uh, showing uh, my approach into the technical and artistic questions. Uh, I recommend watching it if you like to work with creatures and would be more interested in knowing a little bit more how it works. And that's a free tutorial as well. Thank you very much for watching it. I hope you had a, a great time and have a lovely day.